Boston woman gave up the city life, and for the past 10 years, she's been preparing for what might come. That's right. She believes when it comes to surviving natural disasters, minority communities are the most vulnerable. But Sharon, also known as the Afro Vivalist, wants to change that and is creating a grassroots community of preppers. Our Chauncey Glover got a first-hand look at how they prepare for the worst. That's right. You know, our society, we have become <laughs> so spoiled with everything right at our fingertips. I asked you guys what you could not yes. live without. Eric, you said you a can't phone, live without the Apple phone. music on here. Gina, yeah. she can't I live without her. Phone. <laughs> and I cannot live without my food delivery apps. But what if all of this was just suddenly taken away? Would you be able to cope? I traveled almost 2,000 miles to see if I could hack it without the conveniences we all love. Could you survive? That's the big question the Afro Vivalist has for anyone she meets. Me and my photographer Anthony flew into Portland and made the trek to find Sharon Ross. Yeah, there she is. Hey, 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 welcome to Oregon. <laughs> Miss Sharon, how are you? For Ross, it's not a matter of what, but when. Deep in my soul, and, and you know, I, I get my my visions from God and, and he keeps telling me to prepare. Be it a natural disaster, a takedown of our entire electrical grid, or even the apocalypse, the Afro Vivalist is preparing for the worst. So tell me, what is Afro Vivalism? Um, it's a movement for other people like me, people of color, having a conscious mind about preparing for something. Ross says what played out in New Orleans during Katrina and in Puerto Rico during Maria proved when disaster strikes, minority communities are often impacted the most. And historically, the government hasn't done well with helping them. After um, Katrina, and I just told myself, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to be like that. By day, she's a corporate woman working for the state of Oregon. By night, it's really weird. <laughs> I go into survival mode. She's a bona fide survivalist. This is the vehicle I would take if I need to evacuate the city. She calls this her bug out van. I've got a, a toilet back there. I've got water. There's food in here. Ross likes to be off the grid. I went with her. She wanted to see if this city boy could survive the treacherous wilderness. No cell phone service, no Wi-Fi, just me fending for myself. The forecast calling for snow this night. The Afro Vivalist says shelter, fire, and food are three key factors to surviving out here. First thing, establishing camp, shelter. And this spot right here, I think is going to be good enough for you. As temps start to drop, we get wood. I need fire. It gets downright bone cold chili where you just want to scream for your mama. And the most important kit for me is my fire kit. I quickly learned Get down lower. starting a fire isn't as easy as it seems. It took me hours. Well, it takes a lot of practice to start a fire. Good job. There, oh, there go. we go. As there night go. quickly falls, <laughs> give <me> some. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. We get my tent up. The rain pours, the winds whipping. Wow. Weather conditions start to worsen, and the rain douses my fire. And out here, no fire means no food. I am hungry. Surviving also means adjusting to the elements you're dealt with. So we come up with a plan. Uh, yeah. And then pull it tight. All right, is this high enough, Sharon? Yep. And you got to do it real hard. Home style turkey chili. We thank you for this food that we were able to finally prepare. Oh, God. Shelter, fire, food. But the aroma from my campfire chili attracted some unwanted guests. Coyotes. So what do we do? There was only three of them. Only three of them? Yeah, I don't do one coyote. Just, you can hear them. <laughs> Do not, do not, let me repeat, do not ever run. You look big, look as big as you can. And the coyotes buy it and race no, off. Just... All right, Anthony, good night. Get a little bit of sleep. The storm rolled through the night. Let's go check on Chauncey. How'd you make out? I see your fire went out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Long time ago. Huh? There you go. Yeah. Yes. Good morning, sunshine. This is not the life for me. I woke up to snow, but my training wasn't done. You're going to pull back to your chin here. Ross is a skilled archer and says, everyone needs to know how to catch their own food. 
She also showed me how to purify this muddy water. What's it taste like? Good cold water, huh? That is. Now people from all over the country are coming to the Afrovivalist to learn these skills. You know, maybe it could be curiosity for some people. It could be the whole fact of, you know what? This crazy lady might be right. And Sharon, the Afro Revivalist, has purchased 100 acres of land and is now planning to start her own prepper community, complete with earth houses. She's also hoping more and more people will catch on to this big movement and take her main piece of advice, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. I'm thinking her prepper community might can gate out the coyotes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any, then maybe I'd be down for trying Anything but it. the coyotes. <laughs>